as a means of extracting or targeting information. But these people, and they are locked down. Like, you're not going to hack, you know, Trump's phone. They're not. If he even, no, they're not. It's just, I, I'm going to go on good faith assumption that somebody has made it such that his phone is a no fail mission. Like, you know, it's not going to get hacked. Okay. Anything's possible, but um, I've heard about some interesting phone calls he makes. That's just why. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering. But it's the people that are around him that are probably not as opsec uh, right. sensitive. So, uh, so there are the 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 shift that is occurring that started, you know, when commercial data became, um, you know, the community became aware of its of its risk. And of its power. And we do a lot. We did a lot of stuff, not, you know, cowering in the corner. We used it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, moving to that sort of commercial mindset, not everything has to be a black box built by Q. Um, we need to sort of in this data environment where uh, maybe you've heard people talk about something called ubiquitous technical surveillance, UTS. Um, Actually, I have heard UTS. UTS, but, but fill me in on this. Yeah, one. so you, it, it's everything that we've talked about, but the community refers to it as ubiquitous technical surveillance. So it's the cameras, the Wi-Fi sniffers, ad tech, everything that's sort of ambient. You know, um, the 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 Stasi train Roomba on Adderall, mm -hmm. um, particularly in environments where surveillance is just part of the deal. Uh, UTS has has made it such where it's like uh, I'm going to go down the street and I'm I am I can never consider myself black. So instead of you know I can run an eight hour surveillance detection route and there's no physical surveillance. I don't have you know guys following me, but they're following me through my phone, right? Or or through proof of presence based yeah. upon the cameras, Wi-Fi sniffers, everything that sort of makes that. Talks to each other. Talks to each other. Yep. Yep. Um, and so part of that risk is, okay, so maybe I got away with something today, but when that gets outed, the adversary is going to roll back that tape to see every other person you met with, every place you went. Uh, and that's, you know, that's. That's problematic because you may not even see what what you did that revealed or outed your asset. Oh, it only takes one split second. One little like thing. One step in the wrong place and the whole thing's gone. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yep. How much do you know about – because like you, you 10 years ago got pulled into this world and then suddenly we're like the guy to talk to one and we'll it's get really, to like – It's really – when you're sitting at a table uh, with a bunch of like PhDs and SIGINers and, and – they're like, uh, Mike Yeagley is the subject matter expert on uh, Bubble Boat. And you're like, <laughs> you like the Drew's Me? I'm, I, it's, you know, um, the, that's, those are, those are moments when yeah. you're like, okay, am I the, am I really that I'm guy? the guy? Shit. Right. But I, point being, you did become the yeah, guy, absolutely. right? And so that, that's going back 10 years and then you get thrust into this world. And again, we'll go through some of the different things that happened there. Yep. But like now, you know, through your job and through the people you get access to and the jobs you're on, you're also, I'm sure, naturally learning about all the other shit you didn't know about that, you know, how data is collected, technology, all those things. And you've become an expert on that over the years. So how much is it applicable to say like – if someone's using their phone in a restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Some random lady right there, not associated with anyone. She's just some lady. And like you're an important person. You're sitting at that table talking to someone. Is there a spy agency that's in her phone and listening to what you're saying? Like does that kind of thing exist? I don't want to say ubiquitously, but far more commonly than we might think. Probably, I mean, probably not the random person that's in proximity, but – um. So this is, you know, everybody is, is sort of focused on the principal or the the target or the 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 leader, right? Um, as a means of extracting or targeting information, but these people 
and they are locked down. Like you're not going to hack, you know, Trump's phone. They're not. If he even, no, they're not. It was just, uh, I'm going to go on good faith assumption that somebody has made it such that his phone is a no fail mission. Like, you know, it's not going to get hacked. Okay. Anything's possible, but um, I've heard about some interesting phone calls he makes. That's just why. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering. But it's the people that are around him that are probably not as opsec uh, right. sensitive. Um, tracking Putin. So you know there were headlines that we were tracking Putin. You were tracking yeah. Putin. I wasn't tracking Putin. I was tracking his bodyguards. Were you doing this from your bedroom again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, Fuck you, Slava. Gotcha. And, and when that came out, uh, we even got Putin's spokesperson to have to address it. So anyway, that was- So he said in Russian, like death to yeah, Mike Yeah, he, he got- uh, I, They didn't name me if, if I had gotten- I think I think there was one interview where he was like, I don't know who this, you know, he, he, he totally destroyed my name, but this I don't- This fucking Mike Yigley, pay, motherfucker. Pay this man. Pay this man <laughs> pay his, this man, man, his, his money. money. <laughs> um, that was a great movie. Oh, the best. Kids got alligator blood. Can't get rid of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what well, was the where he's like? Uh, yeah, check, check, check. He just goes. Crazy. Oh yeah, where he's like check, check all night. This motherfucker. Yeah, pee this man. He's money. That's the best. Um, I love that you know that. That's yeah. great. So, yeah, the Oreos in the ear. Yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. So I think it's it's anything is possible. I also think that um, you know the media environment is such that every day of the week there's some new uh, thing that we need to be worried about. Um, the most recent one is uh, you know Wi-Fi signals as a as a way of detecting identity based upon body fat. <laughs> yeah. What what? Yeah. So the density. So you know uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, are measured based upon these uh, RISI signals, you know, uh, transmit, bounce back. Like what is the time? And some lab, some university came up with a way of, of being able to detect um, your body composition as a means of – this is just an example. Like you would have to have sort of collected so much data to be able to start determining body types and and – you know, figuring out who's who from, from those signals. But every day, you know, I, and I get my phone lights up with, Hey, did you see this? I'm like, what do we, what do we want? What are we going to do about it? You know, some company, some research lab has proven that you can detect identity based upon the body fat, uh, or body density of an individual based upon the RISI signals. So wait, that actually does. I'm, I'm just adding something in my head. Tell me if I'm like cooking the wrong thing here, but I've been wondering recently, I've talked about on some podcasts, about things that I know verifiably I never typed into Google and I never said out loud. Some things I thought in my head, some things I couldn't remember if I thought in my head, but ads would show up that spoke directly to that thing. And now that I'm thinking about it, most of the ones I'm thinking about are stuff that have to do with like little injuries or knickknacks or like stuff to do with my health or obviously like it can detect I'm moving and I'm in pretty good shape and stuff. Yep. I wonder if that is a part of the data tracking. Could could be. I, I would say I, I get this question a lot where, um, you know, in fact, uh, the secretary of state who is, um, and I like him and I think he's- I think Rubio? He's Rubio, yep. Um, he was talking to a group. Um, I was there and he was lamenting the fact that uh, he's taking- He's learning Italian. Uh, he's doing it online using, you know, Babel or one of these online language. Antonio Margariti. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going to start And he that. was talking about how now I'm getting all these ads, you know, in Italian or travel to Italy. And, you know, how, how does that, how did that happen? And I would like to think that our secretary of state who is negotiating our data sovereignty, uh, you know, bilateral agreements yeah. would know better. And, and maybe he was just being glib, but- um, it's not a great question. The point being, there's probably there is no um, there's probably something that you did, or there is something within your data streams that has predictable value that 
landed that ad on your phone based upon some very benign signal um but in the but in the algorithm world that signal is you know red alert like he is he is managing an injury he is he is primed for us to advertise whatever yeah there's there's always something trying to do a forensic um breakdown of that is is hard because it is it can be such a weak signal like I could you know or they could be using like because that's crazy yeah i mean i think um you know if you use any of these um home um you know smart home things where you're talking to I alexa yeah i don't either um you know you're it's not you're talking to amazon's infrastructure yes you don't own that shit like you're going to talk to alexa alexa is going to print your voice it's learning from your language. It's predicting your times of when you're telling it to play music or turn the lights off or whatever you're asking it to do. Um, you're feeding a large language model that Amazon will use against you to advertise to you when you are on the Amazon yes. app. And Amazon is like a $4 billion advertising business. That's it? I mean, I was it's, say, it's been around for two years, three years. That's it? We $4 billion. It's only been around for two, three years? Their advertising business. Really? So Amazon, been around forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, you know, they they stand up, you know, like we're, we're good at this. Let's turn it into a business. So their demand side, their, their advertising business alone contributes $4 billion. Yeah, first of all, I didn't know that was only two years old. Secondly, $4 billion even seems like that's going to be $40 billion in two seconds or should already be. Yeah. I mean, it's like, because they own, I mean, look, I ain't going to lie. Amazon's incredible. So I think about it, it like this crazy. way. Amazon can, you know, used to go, you used to be, you'd go like on Google search for stuff. Yeah, fuck that. Now you're just, you're searching. So Amazon sees you at the point of interest. How you sort of navigate and do product selection to the point of sale. Yep. They have that full visibility. Um, and this is this kind of upended Facebook's ad business because Facebook's uh, or Meta's promise was, you know, um, somebody looking at a, you know, cute cat videos is is predictive of some other than, you know, other than they like cats. And but right. cat videos don't sell advertising, don't sell product. Understanding, like this is a person who is buying whatever uh, dog food, um, lunchables. You've got kids, you know. Whatever you are buying is indicate is an indicator of your lifestyle. Amazon has the full visibility of that. They understand you know, this is urgent. So oh yeah, something's going on. I have no doubt Amazon so, knows everything about um, my purchases. And that's you know that's you know uh, that's called um, sort of the first party data market where in the early days you had you didn't have a segmentation of third party data data brokers um and first party data you know uber amazon um you just had this amalgamation of of data and everybody was trying to figure out how do we monetize this how do we sell product through these data sets um and because of privacy because of um people getting smarter um, and because of AI, companies that otherwise were like selling data because they had no other means of valuing it, they're like, this shit is gold. Oh, yeah. All the metaphors, data is the new oil. They've figured out why and how to use it for the for the benefit of their business. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.